Hey everybody, welcome to this edition of Dubro 101. Today we're going to talk about Dubro's Remote Safety Igniter. This is a device that allows you to use your glow plug igniter in a position that is not right next to a spinning propeller. And if you're wondering why that's a good idea, then you are one of the lucky modelers who has never been bitten by a model airplane propeller. Anyone who has experienced that trauma will tell you that it is not something they will soon forget or ever want to repeat. So if safety at the field is high on your list of priorities, and it should be, then this is a device that will help you keep all of your digits attached. Keep watching and I'll show you how to install one on your model airplane. This remote safety igniter is a really simple device. It consists of about 30 inches of wire. And then on one end, you have two connectors. The first is a clip that attaches to your glow plug, and then you have a grounding wire that attaches somewhere to the motor's crankcase. Then on the other end, we have a plastic housing. And there's a cover on the housing. When you rotate out of the way, it reveals a male plug that interfaces with your glow plug igniter. And that's all there is to it. There are two types of remote safety igniters. With the standard version, the connector clips to the top of the glow plug, and then the wire sits horizontally across the top of the engine cylinder head. With the remote safety igniter for recessed glow plugs, the connector clips to the glow plug and the wire extends vertically. And this is useful for some four-stroke engines or engines that have large heat sinks where the glow plug is less accessible. Before you start drilling holes in your model airplane, there are three considerations that you should think about. The first is structural. This housing is going to undergo a lot of pushing and pulling during normal use as you install and remove your glow plug igniter. So you want to make sure that the structure this housing is attached to can withstand those forces. Look for an area on your model that has stout balsa or light plywood sheeting. And if you're still unsure about the strength of that area, you can always double it up with extra material on the inside surface. Another consideration is accessibility. The whole point of this device is to make the act of starting your engine safer and easier. So while you're thinking about areas to mount the housing, you also want to think about what parts of your airplane are safely and easily accessible while you're starting the engine, either on the ground or in an engine starting stand at your field. If you're considering a location somewhere along the right side of the fuselage, be mindful of the muffler. You don't want to place the housing anywhere where it could get sprayed with oily exhaust residue. The final consideration is aesthetics. While this housing is pretty low profile once it's installed, you probably don't want it to be a focal point of your model. For example, with this airplane, the panel behind the engine would be a fantastic place to mount the housing from an accessibility point of view. However, it might not look that great. So we're gonna try to find another area that isn't so obvious. Once you have determined which type of remote safety igniter you want to use and where you want the housing located, you'll need to drill two holes in your airplane. The first is a 3 8 inch diameter hole through the firewall. This will allow you to pass the connectors through to attach to the engine. In most cases, you can use a standard 3 8 inch diameter drill bit for this job. The other hole you will need is a 5 8 inch diameter hole where the housing will be located. And I do not recommend using a standard drill bit for this job because it will likely just shred the balsa or light ply sheeting. Instead, I prefer to cut away the covering and then use a grinding bit or a sanding drum in my Dremel tool. Now that I have the holes cut out, I want to test fit the remote safety igniter. And I will do that by passing the connectors through the large hole. I feed the wires in up to the housing, then pass the connectors to the front and out through the firewall. Now once everything is staged in place, you can see that I have quite a bit of surplus wire here. And while it isn't mandatory, I do think it's a good idea to cut off this extra wire. Doing so will get rid of clutter in the airplane, but more importantly, it will cut down on the electrical resistance of the system. So it looks like I'm going to have about a foot of wire to remove here. And as I do that, I will make sure that the splice ends up inside the fuselage where it's protected from the elements. I've removed the excess wire on the remote safety igniter and I'm ready to install it in the airplane. And we'll repeat the process from before of going through the large hole and feeding the wires to the front. And once we have passed the connectors through the firewall, we can actually mate the connectors with the engine. The glow plug igniter attaches to the post on the glow plug. And the grounding terminal needs to be grounded. And I do that by attaching it to one of the engine mounting bolts. And before I do that, I'm going to make sure to clean the area very thoroughly so that I have a good electrical connection.
Now that the remote safety igniter is set into place, I'm going to use some adhesive to make sure it all stays where I want it to. I could use 5 minute epoxy for this job, but I prefer to use goop adhesive. Some people call it shugu. This kind of glue stays a little bit flexible when it dries, and that helps it to absorb engine vibrations. It also makes it easier to remove if you ever want to transfer the remote safety igniter into another airplane. Now it doesn't take much glue at all. I'm just going to use a dab or two on the flange of the housing and then push it into place. Then I'll add another dab on the inside. Up front, I'll add some goop to the firewall to seal up the hole where the wire passes through. Once the glue has dried, this job is done, but do not head to the field just yet. You want to keep in mind that the extra wire and connections of the remote safety igniter will put a slightly higher load on your glow driver, so you want to make sure that that glow driver is fully charged and in good working order. Now you can head to the field and have lots of fun flying with complete confidence that you will return home with the same number of fingers that you left with. So thanks for watching and be sure to subscribe to this channel so that you do not miss out on our upcoming videos.